Welcome to FOSS North, the virtual edition. We would like to thank all our sponsors and partners in this difficult situation. Our gold sponsors, Luxoft and Ansible by Red Hat. Our silver sponsors, ITRS Group and Make It Right. Our base sponsors. Our partner projects, the open source community and the region of Gothenburg. And a huge thanks to our awesome community. This would not have been possible without you. Hi, hello. So I'm uh, Chris Simmons. So welcome to uh, this virtual uh, FOS North from virtual Gothenburg. And I'm here to talk about running Android on the Raspberry Pi. So just a little bit of detail about me. Um, I'm, I've been doing uh, training and presentations for quite some time. I've been doing Linuxy stuff for about 20 years and Android related stuff for about 10 years. So why do we want to run Android on a dev board such as a Raspberry Pi? So my own personal uh, reason for doing this is for, uh, it's a good learning experience. If you want to learn how something works, it's best to pull it to pieces and then put it back together and fix it as it breaks. So that's my approach. Um, it allows me to test different Android builds. So I can try different versions, different configurations. And if it blows up, it doesn't matter. I haven't lost my entire phone. I've only lost, uh, I only need to reflash my, uh, my dev board. And finally, it is fun. No, really, it is fun, believe me. So if you're running Android on a dev board, uh, what kind of thing you're going to be looking for in that dev board. So it's got to be one of the supported uh, architectures for Android. So that means basically ARM or x86 or MIPS in 32 and 64 bit vari varieties, variants. Um, but I've got to say that the MIPS support is dropping. I think MIPS has been dropped out of Android 10. Um, and anyway, MIPS is not so popular as it used to be. Second thing, you need a fairly recent version of, of uh, Linux. Uh, if you're running Android 10, you will need a version 4.9 or later. <clears throat> You'll need at least uh, half a gig of RAM. So that really is the very bare minimum. It will just about boot up uh, with that. Uh, ideally, you need, um, well, two gigabytes would be ideal uh, for a typical dev board. You need some storage, typically flash memory of some kind. Um, in practical, in, in production systems, it would be EMMC or uh, UFS or something of that sort. Um, but we can, for particularly for demos and particularly in the case of the Raspberry Pi, we can get by with just using an SD card. You're going to need a touch screen. Android is very much a touch based uh, user experience. And uh, there are many uh, fairly cheap HDMI touch screens available. And you need support for a GPU. Uh, that will run Android Open, sorry, that will run OpenGL ES with the Android extensions. So here's a bunch of uh, dev boards I pulled off my shelf. Um, so going across the top there, there's the one board, which is an IMX6 uh, based system. There's a dragon board, which is a Qualcomm um, uh, Snapdragon based system. There's the high key, which is a Kirin thing. Uh, on the bottom line, we've got a Digi Connect core, which is another IMX uh, device. There's a good old BeagleBone in the, in the, in the back. Uh, the BeagleBone isn't quite capable of running Android from uh, eight onwards, but it was very good, to, good up to uh, and including Android, te uh, Android 7. And then uh, bottom right, we have the good old Raspberry Pi 3, uh, which is what I'm focusing on uh, in this little presentation. So why the Raspberry Pi out of that bunch? Well, it's cheap. That's got to count for something. Um, it's easy to, get, easy to get a hold of. Some of those other boards are of uh, limited supply. Uh, they tend to go end of life very quickly. The Raspberry Pi has been around for ages and looks like it's going to be uh, around for a lot longer yet. It's hackable, so there's a good community. There's good resources to help you understand how the hardware works. Um, and anything you want to work with, with a Raspberry Pi, somebody somewhere has done it. And finally, because it's there, so anything that can run Android really should run Android, in my opinion. So this is part of that, uh, that process. So this is the Raspberry Pi. This is actually a Raspberry Pi 3B+. Um, we, we, we're just limiting ourselves to Raspberry Pi 3s here. 
Um, there is some support for the Raspberry Pi 4, um, but it's um, it's lacking some uh, ways. Well, there are some issues with the graphics which haven't really yet been ironed out yet. So uh, the, the Pi 3 is a quad core um, Cortex A53 uh, ARM processor, 1.4 gigahertz on the, on the B plus. We've got a gigabyte of RAM, which is kind of just about enough, but only just, given that some of that is shared with the GPU. Uh, we've got an SD card for storage, which as I said just now is kind of okay, although we'd, we'd prefer onboard uh, eMMC if we had it. There's USB, there's ethernet, there's Wi-Fi, there's Bluetooth, there's HDMI, and we've got the 40 pin header so we can plug in extension hats of one sort or another. So I'm talking about this as if it's the new thing. It isn't, it really isn't. So people have been working on this um, in various guises for some years. Probably the, the longest running project is Android RPi. Uh, and it's also worthwhile mentioning the Lineage OS port done by Consta Kang. So the Linux are there. Highly recommend to go have a look, see what those guys are doing. Um, in general then, so you've got a dev board, in our case, a Raspberry Pi, but it could, could have been one of the other ones. What are you gonna do if you wanna run Android on these guys? So you need, of course, a copy of the, uh, the Android source code, which is readily available. You need a kernel with Android extensions. That usually means that you need some um, support from the, uh, upline, uh, the, the, the uh, upstream um, SOC vendor. In our case, for the Raspberry Pi, we'll be using the kernel from the, uh, uh, the uh, actually, the Android RPi project. Um, you're going to be doing some low level hacking, so you need to know how the hardware uh, works. You need all the help you can get from anybody who's prepared to give it. Uh, you need a fairly fast computer because an AOSP build is going to take at least an hour and can easily take uh, four or five hours. And con correspondingly, you need a fair amount of time and patience. What is special about the Raspberry Pi that makes it a little bit tricky? So first of all, it has a, uh, a non-standard proprietary bootloader. Uh, the graphics um, is, is an issue, as I'll discuss on the, on the slide after next. And there is an issue with the, the way the USB is, is wired up. So let's go through those one by one. So the booting then. Um, so normally when you're running, uh, doing with Android, you expect to use fast boot. Um, but unfortunately, the, uh, the Raspberry Pi bootloader, which is proprietary, um, it doesn't have that fast boot support, unsurprisingly. Um, so we, we can still get around that since you can build, you can boot uh, Raspberry with it with a little bit of a few tweaks here and there, you can get it to boot uh, Android. Um, you still can't use uh, the fast boot protocol, but then you can always just take the SD card out, plug it into your computer, reflash it, and plug it back into the Raspberry Pi. So that's how we, uh, uh, we get updates onto the, onto the device. And you can also do some work with uh, using uh, an Android aware bootloader, for example, U-Boot which allows you to get some of the Android integration points, for example, the boot reason. So you you can type something like ADB reboot uh, recovery, and that will then boot you into recovery mode. Challenge number two, the graphics. Um, so again, generally speaking, we need OpenGL ES libraries with Android extensions. Where do you get them from? So the first option usually is to go to the, uh, the SOC vendor, uh, and you get the binaries from them. Okay, Broadcom don't support Android at all, so that's not an option. Option two, there is support from the Mesa project and DRM, which we can use for the Raspberry Pi. If neither of those uh, work, you can always fall back to using the soft uh, GPU called Swift Shader, but it is a soft GPU, so it's gonna be kind of slow. Here's a quick diagram of uh, the Mesa graphics stack. The important things really are that uh, in the middle, uh, where it says how we have uh, libglaze v1 uh, misa.so and such like. So those are the, um, the, the OpenGL libraries. And then down there at the bottom, we have the kernel integration uh, through the DRM. 
just get through that fairly quickly. So Mesa, great project, go look at it there. It has support for a whole bunch of mobile uh, GPUs, including that bunch. Uh, Swift Shader is, not, is the alternative if you don't have uh, support from Mesa and you don't have proprietary drivers. And then, find, uh, and then the third challenge was uh, with the lack of USB. Uh, so normally you need an OTG port. Turns out the Raspberry Pi 3 doesn't have an OTG. So we can fall back to using ADB over Ethernet or over, over a network. Uh, so you do ADB connect, and then you can run ADB shell or any other ADB command, and it works as normal. So there it is. Uh, I put this all together. Uh, the link to the, to the GitHub is there. And you can contact me in various ways and you can tweet me and that's me done. So I guess any questions? Yes, we have. Uh, so I have a question here from uh, Dimitris. So which AOSP development board is the easiest and cheapest to get started with? And have you tried Odroid N2? Um, so the easiest um, would be one of those that supported out of the box um, with the ASP code base. So if you look at the ASP code, then um, the high key uh, 960 uh, should work pretty much out of the box without any uh, additional porting. Uh, also the uh, BeagleBoard X15 uh, also is directly supported. Um, neither of those boards are particularly cheap. They're $200 plus. Um, but they should work with minimal effort. Um, have I tried the Odroid? No, I haven't. Um, maybe I should, but I, I haven't got around to that yet. Okay. okay, you one is going to kill me for asking one more question, but I'll do that. So is the RPI3 fast enough to work with, or is it really uh, too slow then? Well, um, it's not fast, let's put it that way. Um, it's great for demos. Um, I wouldn't really want to use it in a production device. So I would say it's kind of demo quality. It's not really, really even beta quality. So it's, it's, a, it's a play thing at the moment. I have great uh, faith in the Raspberry Pi 4. And if we can get the Mesa uh, support on the Pi 4, then that will be a really, really good platform. But it's not there yet. Perfect. Thank you very much, Chris.